Hello and welcome to episode 65 of the Boot Nerds podcast. J. Mike, what's going on? I'm, I'm feeling fantastic, my friend. How are you? I'm doing quite well. I just had a little bit of a voice crack right in the intro, which I, I seem to be doing <laughs> a lot lately. 27 years old, I'm hitting like second wave of puberty, it looks like. I'm not sure what's going on. Look, mate, if voice cracks uh, is, is all you have to deal with, then, you know, I guess losing your hair and, you know, well, losing your hair, that's a pretty big one. As long as you don't have to deal with that, you're going to be fine. Exhibit <laughs> A, it's not very nice. So, so yeah. I'm just wondering, where on earth is your uh, Corona cut? Like, like why, why, uh, why do you still have hair? It's not, it's not there. It's not, it's not happening yet. They're, uh, I'm, not at, I'm not at that point. I am gravely disappointed. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and I think a lot of people behind the, the, the screens are also very, very disappointed. Yeah, we'll see what so, happens with that. I, 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 n there was never any promises. I already had the promise to clean up the SR4U boot room, and that's not gone extremely well. It's, it's, <laughs> it's better that I don't make promises. That's been, that's, I think that's been like an open promise for, say, five or six years, right? Yeah, so, pretty much, yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, but as, as long as you then just let your hair grow, then I, I, I just want, guys, if you want to see Josh shave off his head, uh, or hit, don't shave off your head. That's going to go wrong. Shave off the hair. Just shave off the hair. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section right down below or leave a like on the video. Everything uh, will do. Also, of course, if you just enjoy what we do, leave us, leave us a like. It makes us happy. So uh, with that said, I think we should get into uh, today's topic, which is uh, it's a bit of a funny one because it's kind of a, you know, modern... Um, old comparison, kind of like a, a retro review weaved into looking at how football boot technology has progressed. Uh, we're going to take a look at the A16 Plus Pure Control and the new Predator 20 Plus. Because we had this idea of, of you know, basically the, the Ace is, that was the first laceless boot from Adidas. Well, the first widely released laceless boot from Adidas um, after they went with the whole knit laceless concept and and was the spiritual uh, predecessor to the to the predator 20 but a, a lot of people have been saying you know is that just the ace with rubber elements on and and that kind of inspired me to uh, to ask that question it, it, it is it uh, there's a very simple answer to that question is no but I thought we could just discuss how much it's actually evolved and how much better Adidas have gotten at making laceless boots since 2016. But I think that's that's the question here is have they actually gotten better? I know that as a concept they're very different football boots. But as as a laceless football boot at its core, which one actually does a better job? I I okay, think that's, that's a really I question. think that's a really interesting topic and I think everybody watching this podcast understands the, I don't want to say flaws, but the, the, the negatives that are associated with a laceless football boot design. We don't need to go over that in this video. Uh, I, I think a lot of boot nerds, regardless of what their opinion is on laceless football boots at this point in time, you were probably very intrigued by the A16 plus pure control when it first came out. And you, you probably got a pair to try them yourself just to see what they were all about where your opinion swayed from that point obviously is going to vary from person to person. But I still see this as a very popular opinion amongst laceless boot aficionados is that the pure control, the first pure control was the best and is the best laceless boot Adidas has ever made. I hear that opinion a lot. Really? Yes. Wow. I, I think it's a very popular one. That's that's a new. I, I mean, I kind of understand why because it has Magisto vibes to it in the sense that it it was probably the boot that sparked the big change for Adidas, right? Just like the Magista really, um, uh, it was kind of the first step to a new direction for Nike. Uh, so in that regard, I understand it. But 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 for me, I think while I enjoyed what the A16 Plus Pure Control was all about, and I thought it was a new experience, I would definitely point to it as being the worst of all the laceless A slash predators. And that's maybe a bold statement, but, but I don't really particularly think it's that good. 
it's it's not a bad football boot and but this is like the the first step it's like you, you know the first step you take as a kid is not a very it's not a very good step it's not a very stable step it's not you know you you're not going to win any prizes for walking beautifully it's just you know you're wobbling trying out new things and this to me is is that it's a very significant first step because of what it ended up becoming I, I don't. I don't know. Am I completely? Am I too too harsh? I, I think. I think you're a little harsh because I think that this pure control has more in common with the current predator than you, you probably realize right now. If you think about the base upper, they're both prime knit bases. But I think the takeaway and what was surprising for me, at least, when I got the pure control on my feet for the first time, is that. While it's a knitted upper, and we kind of associate that with a very soft sock-like sensation, it's a very plasticky upper for the most part. It's not particularly soft, and I, I think you can kind of describe the Pred Twenty Plus Prime Knit Upper as the same th- as the same thing. Obviously, they intentionally took the softness out of it, and that's partially due to the fact that you have these demon skin spikes, which are providing some kind of additional cushion when making contact with the ball. So they had to do that in order to maintain proper ball feel. But it also doesn't really have, I know you would look at that and be like, oh, it must feel like a sock, but it doesn't really feel like a sock when you have it on your feet. I think the most sock-like laceless boot that Addy ever made was the Pred 18 plus and 19 plus. That genuinely had a soft feel to it, right? So I think in that that regard, they're very similar. What I also really like about a 16 plus and a 17 plus is that it actually has what is visibly an attempt at enhancing the lockdown of a laceless product with the internal structure where I feel like that's kind of been abandoned by Addy with a lot of their laceless models. And, and I I feel like that shows in the lockdown. I think when, when the pure control first came out, I was like, you know what? It's, it's kind of what I expected. It's flawed in a lot of ways, but if this is the starting point, then I'm optimistic for where they can go from here in terms of creating a proper fit and proper lockdown with a laceless concept. But I almost feel like as time has gone on, the fact that the boot is laceless seems to be like the last priority in the final design more than anything. I, I definitely understand what you're saying. And, and it, it's an interesting you know, it's interesting that Adidas actually went with that design because we also saw that on the Prime Knit 2.0s in terms of having, you know, I know it had laces, but it also had that inner inner sleeve, that inner, you know, knitted seat belt that we that we saw on the A16 Pluses, uh, which was, I mean, when you look at the boots side by side, basically you can kind of see that, that the Prime Knit 2.0s was what the uh, the the... Uh, the Flyknit Ultra was to the Vapor 12. I mean, it shares a lot of similarities and you could basically say that the the, the, the Pure Controls is kind of the the older, well, uh, the, the newer brother at least, an evolution of the Prime Knit 2.0s. So, so I definitely understand where that's coming from. But, but for me, the problem was that while it helped to a certain extent in giving you more lockdown, I felt that the boot had... Uh, uh, such a big flaw in the opening that ruined a lot of that secure sensation for me because the opening was just like, oh, it was, it was too big. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, the collar design if, if we that they went it, for. Uh, definitely, and, and you needed, you needed a, a, a bigger opening to, for ease of entry. You, you can't have a boot like, I think if people back then got the Predator 20 Plus, which is difficult to get on at first until you get the hang of it, that would have been a different story. But for me, it's just when I put this on and I, you know, I put my foot forward and put my toes on the ground, you know, there's like a big, big open empty space at the end of, of the boot and it just doesn't feel very secure. Uh, it also ends up with me getting like tons of little uh, rubber um, <laughs> grains inside my boots when I play. And that to me is not just, a, it doesn't show that the boot is one with my foot. Uh, that was the biggest problem for me. But but I see what you're saying in that in terms of how much they feel like a sock, yes, there is definitely a, a similarity. Yeah. I, I think you made an interesting comparison as well with the 2015, uh, the Prime Knit 2.0, which if you look at the uppers, the, the base Prime Knit is kind of the same pattern for the most part. 
but you end up with, with a much softer, less structured execution because you're getting that structure and security and lockdown from the lacing system, right? So I think the big issue with a lot of laceless boots so far is that if, in order for the laceless concept to work, you have to add structure in other ways, which is typically in the upper, which makes for a stiffer feel, which takes away from the sock-like sensation that I think a lot of people would expect from something that is kind of being marketed as, hey, this is this is basically the most sock-like football boot that you can buy. It's literally a sock that you just slide on your feet. And I don't know, for me, I still think that it's very disappointing that we're what, four years into the evolution of laceless football boots now, I feel like knitted technology in that four years has changed pretty drastically, especially in the Nike side of things. But Addy still seems content to just, hey, let's leave some stretchy knitted material across the top of the foot and call it a day. Like uh, to me, that's like out of all the effort that went into that boot, that's like the one area where it's like, ah, you know what? That's good enough. But but maybe because I, w- I definitely agree that knitted boots have changed or and, and knit has changed for the better and and for me that's also very visible on the Predator Twenty because it's come so far that you actually don't need that internal uh, seat belt structure that we saw on the A sixteen and the the seventeen pluses because we, you've actually now you're able to make a knit that's able to stretch enough. To, for you to get your foot in, but then also uh, compressed and tight enough to actually provide a decent amount of lockdown. Of course, you also get it from having a lot of silicone on uh, over the knit itself to give you that stiffness. But but for me, there's there's like a huge difference in in the compression of the knit. And maybe you're right; it's a bit lazy. But I mean, just looking at it now, and maybe I'm not visionary enough. <laughs> I don't know. But I just struggle to see how they would do it differently. Do you know what I mean? But that's, you're right. You're hundred percent right. I, I just think that for me, if, if you're going to have this laceless concept, which obviously people were very excited about back in 2016, I feel like there's a lot less excitement around laceless boots now, because I think a lot of people that have tried them are, are over them. Not to say that there aren't people that are dedicated to laceless boots and that's, that's what they really like. But uh, do you really think as, aside from shape, I think shape has a bigger impact on lockdown when it comes to a laceless boot more than anything else. Do you really feel like the lockdown technology has actually improved in four years of laceless boot evolution? Do you think that the lockdown's that much better on that pred versus that yes. ace? You do? Yes. Yes. That, that was my that was gonna be my next point. See, I feel that my foot is way more secure inside the uh the pred and and, and the copa. I would say lockdown technology in general. Mm, has it come that far when we look at the uh, the X and the the Nemesis, for instance? Yes, I do still think it's it's better than than in the uh, the Pure Control, but but from the A16 to the Pred 20, for me, yes, there's a big big difference. Maybe also because I have a a, a, a slim foot, a narrow foot, so I need a lot. You know, the second there's a little bit of empty space inside the boot, my foot is sliding all over the place. So. I think you're right in, in saying that the, the shape is very important. You know, the shape of the heel has changed a lot. So we have this S curve now that we also saw introduced on the, on the Pred 18, where it goes in and actually puts pressure on your heel here to keep it more in place. And we didn't have that to the same extent in the A's. And, and just for, for me, lockdown is also how, how uh, you know, how much my foot moves and how secure I feel. And by, by simply having this loads of space and a very flimsy color on the ace, I felt uh, like my foot was more inclined to move inside of the boot than it does in the pred, which simply just feels like it can't move at all because there's no there's no negative space inside. But I kind of gather that you're the you're in the opposite camp. I you don't feel for me, I feel like there's more structure to the, to the A16 plus where given that it fits you properly, I think that you might get better lockdown out of it. Again, I I think that laceless boots are very dependent on your specific feet in that specific boot because it's, it's the worst question because we get asked for advice on which boots are going to fit the best all time. And when people ask me which laceless boots going to fit them, like it's an impossible question to answer because like you realistically would have to try them all on and 
it's more than likely that the one that you didn't want is the one that's going to actually fit you the best. It's just how it ends up working because there is no adjustability. I think for me, what I, I don't love about the laceless thing so far is that I don't think that it's really pushing the boundaries of, of performance forward. I think from a design perspective, yeah, we're getting some boots that are visually very different than other things because of the laceless aspect, but even less so now because everything is now knitted uppers. Everything is a one piece construction. And really, I mean, taking if you take the laces out of a pair of mercurials, you have an idea of what a laceless mercurial would look like. I think nobody's mind is blown by that concept anymore. So, I mean, I mean, I just look at like A16 plus pure control versus A16.1 prime knit available at the time. That A16.1 prime knit is a softer knitted upper. It fits better. It performs better. I think it's just a functionally a better pair of football it's boots. Way better football boot. It's, I agree. It's maybe not as visually appealing, but no. that's definitely the case. And now we're four years on with the the concept of the laceless thing having some time to evolve. And we have the Pred 20 Plus and the Pred 20.1. And which one do we unanimously agree is by far the better boot? It's still the 20.1. So where mm -hmm. are we really going with this? For me, this is... I, I hate seeing these technologies being pushed that aren't really pushing the boundary forward. They're just... They just, at this point for me, laceless boots just exist as an option if you like laceless boots, but they're they're very clearly not trying to make a better product. Uh, okay. I I don't necessarily see it as as they're not trying to make a better product. As I understand what you're saying, but I more see it as a like now it's there. They they realize that a lot of people want it. It's also, I think, still a hype thing because laceless boots just, they have that, you know, super fly vibe to them. It, it's just a more exclusive product to have. It, it there's, there's bigger desirability around a laceless product. But I, I often think about, you know, you and I that both agree and, and basically most people agree that the 20.1 is the better performer. But are we simply, are we too old? Like to 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 really understand why people would want a laceless football boot. Do, do you know what I mean? I no, I I get you. And we just watched your live stream. I just watched uh -huh. your live stream you did with Unisport. And the one question was, what year did the CTR three sixty Maestri one come out? Yeah. And the first caller, his answer was nineteen ninety five. Which again, I'm not trying to pick on anybody here, but it. It was, it was, it was a younger kid. He probably was 12, 13 years old, if I had to guess. And I mean, for us, that's, that's a ridiculous answer. Sure. But to a, to a 12 or 13 year old, that's legitimately never seen those boots. They're as old as he is. Yeah. I, I guess that a CTR 360 looks kind of old school versus what football boots have become. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's that perspective of somebody that's half our age is going to have a very different perception of what is cool and not cool or good or not good. I, I think that the boot nerds, the people that would watch this podcast definitely understand why a laceless boot might not be the best in terms of objective performance. But I also think that we saw for really, I would say the first time ever with a brand new Addy product where people were legitimately upset at how Adidas was trying to push the 20 plus with especially with that launch colorway, it looked far better visually than what we got with the 20.1. And there were a lot of people upset that they're clearly trying to make this one seem like the attractive option when in reality, the less expensive and far more simple setup is actually the better pair of football boots. So I think that's where people can get rightfully, rightfully so a little bit upset. And if you look at the, the pro players and their support for certain models, laceless and laced, I know that they're being paid to wear whatever brand that they're wearing, but I think that the support on the laced models versus the laceless is pretty overwhelming in favor of the lace boots, right? Not to say that they don't have some of their biggest names wearing laceless football boots, but at the same time, they're also getting custom boots kind of changes the scenario a little bit. Right. So I don't know. I, I, I understand that a younger, somebody younger would might prefer a laceless boot, but does that, does that mean is that the justification for just making a product that's not as good as it could be? How would you make the the Pred 20 Plus better then? 
It it would it would have a lacing system, Jay. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. It, it would have a lacing system. I just I just don't think what I guess what I'm getting at here is I I don't see any progression in in laceless technology. There hasn't been the the only like attempt at doing something that's like truly unique and different as far as creating laceless lockdown is what they've done with the Nemesis line, which has been a complete fail. And I think the lockdown has actually gotten worse as the line has gone on, which is. Surprising because I think that the Nemesis 17 Plus as a concept when it was first introduced, I'm like, hey, that that legitimately makes a lot of sense. I'm excited to try this, but it's it just ended up being the same as any other laceless boot where it's still stretchy material that will stretch upon the entire force of your body trying to stop yourself while wearing these football boots. You still need something that is solid and secure and locked in place to hold your foot down. But okay, so here's a statement and, and correct me if I'm completely off the boil here. But my statement is, and I dropped the boot. My statement is that for me, uh, laceless technology has gotten good enough for me to actually get acceptable lockdown in, I would say at least two, maybe three out of four of Adidas's laceless boots for me to be happy enough to wear them at training or even in a match. Uh, I'm thinking of the Copa 20 pluses and I'm thinking of uh, Pred 20 pluses. I know that you can get better laces in, uh, better, sorry, lockdown in, in the 20.1s, especially for the Pred. But for me, it's it's come to a point where it's good enough. Now, me personally, I wouldn't go out and get uh, go into a match in an A16 plus pure control simply because I feel that the lockdown is not is not good enough. The boot is not responsive enough for, for, for me. I would rather much rather have the 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 16.1s so you know for me the gap between the point ones that has the laces and the better lockdown between that and the and the pluses is getting smaller in terms of how much better lockdown the point ones have that was the statement it was a long one i'm sorry i i ajay i think that's totally fair um, I just think that they're, they're at a point now where regardless of personal preference, they are offering two top end variations in each line. And I think the Copa is the exception because I legitimately do prefer the 20 plus over the 20.1. So I'm going to scratch that out like that, that. That line doesn't count. But if you're talking about X Pred and Nemesis, I think that they are legitimately at a point right now where they are offering for a premium a football boot that is objectively worse than the point one variation. And like, I just look at Nike, the Mercurial series, the Vapor and the Superfly. For a very long time, while the Superfly was technologically more interesting, it was worse than the Vapor. Certainly less wearable from a comfort perspective. Mm. I think most people would agree. But now, obviously they're the same thing. So again, they're, Nike's kind of contradicting themselves and doing the same thing right now with the Vapor and Superfly. But- Superfly 4, Superfly 5, Vapor 10, Vapor 11. You legitimately had two very good options that obviously one was more expensive than each than the other, but they were very different experiences for the most part. So there was a reason to buy a Vapor over a Superfly or vice versa. Now, you, it's it's like you just if you're buying the laceless boot, you're kind of just knowingly buying a worse product for more money. I I, I don't like that aspect of it. But what if what if people who buy the laces cuz because I see what you're saying, but but technically isn't what Adidas are doing right now to offer different experiences at, of course, different prices. I mean, if they just slapped laces on on this, obviously gave it a different knit, it would just be a slightly higher 20.1, wouldn't it? With with slightly more aggressive uh, rubber spikes. I mean, th- then the, the, the point about the high card 20.1 would sort of disappear and it would turn for me at least would turn more into a superfly seven vapor 13 kind of thing which i think is is utterly pointless at this point you Mm -hmm. know it's it's for me and and this is where i'm getting at maybe i don't understand a way of choosing football boots where lockdown and responsiveness isn't high up the list in terms of things you're looking for maybe people see this as a great alternative because the lockdown is good enough let's say that it's acceptable but they're looking for something else they're looking for it to be wilder bolder more expressive they're looking for it to 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 stand out more maybe that's what this boot is is offering despite offering a worse performance 
because of a lack of lockdown compared to the point ones, it does give you something else. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, Jay. And I think that's why the Copa is a good example because I feel like with the Copa 20 plus, the reason why that one stands out so much is it's a legitimately unique experience versus what you get from the 20.1. And I think you, I think it's a fair argument to make that with the X line right now as well because you have two very different uppers and the boots do legitimately have a different feel to them when you make contact with the ball. I, I think that to te- for, for the counter argument to have to be, and these are your words, not mine, Jay, that it's good enough like it's Adidas, impossible is nothing. It's not Adidas, they're good enough. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it's that, are we just gonna let, is that the standard now? Is the standard good enough on a pair of football boots that is 275? This is, you're talking about football boots that are, if you're buying a laceless football boot from the Addy brand at full price, you could have picked anything else. Like literally anything else. Apart from There's a not pair much, of Japan. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Apart from a Mizuno product, you're right. <laughs> So I, I, I guess that's my point. Unless you are going to, I feel like the laceless thing, it, it's a, it, as a concept, I, I'm, I'm still for them pushing it. I think it's good. But I think if you're going to make a laceless product, it should be focused around being laceless first. And that's the core of the experience where I think they did that very well with the Copa right now. Where the Predator, it's like, hey, we made this laceless Predator there's really not anything beneficial to it being laceless other than the fact that it looks kind of cool. But hey, if we had laces to pretty much the exact same design, you end up with a much better product. That's it's like, it's like selling a car with round wheel wheels and selling a car with square wheels. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's look, look, man, I understand what you're saying. And, and that's maybe the thing that do Adidas need laceless P plus models for all their silos. I mean, does it make sense to have a laceless speed boot? I, I'm not. I'm not convinced it does because no. in, in when you look at a speed boot, you need responsiveness. Do you get that in a laceless boot? Not so much. So, I understand it in the pred because it's all about you know it's all about the 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 360 uh you know melting onto your foot and feeling uh unrestricted and all that stuff. It it is a special sensation to step into a pair of these because they just, they feel different than the 20.1s. For, for me, this is this is a unique experience and that's what I want when I pay a uh, top dollar. But for the Xs, for the Nemesis, I mean, just just focus on the point ones and make them super duper top notch killer. And then give us the laces boots when you actually have something unique to offer with that laceless product. I, I agree with that 100%, Jay. I think that there's, if the, if the plus model is not going to be something that is truly different than what's on offer from the point one, then what's the point? No pun intended. But I, I think, I, I hate giving criticism and not saying what they should have done instead. But if you look at the Predator 20 plus versus the 20.1 as an example, what they did to really change up the recipe is they basically doubled the demon skin dots or spikes, which has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that it's laceless. They could have very easily done that on the 20.1 as well. They did that as incentive to go for the 20 plus. For me, if you're not going to have laces taking up a significant chunk across the top of the foot on a boot that is predominantly designed around control and striking the ball, why is there not some kind of an element that spans across the top of the foot, an area that you have freed up because you have left out the laces on the football boot, right? Make on a football boot like that, make the striking experience, make the contact with the ball a highlight. Where I feel like with laceless boots, the reason why people think it's a good thing if they're not necessarily that into football boots, so the laces aren't there, it's less bulk, it's a cleaner touch. But I don't necessarily think you even get that with the 20 plus versus the 20.1 right now. No, you don't get a cleaner touch, definitely. That's that's true because the spikes are just everywhere and they're, they're like this high. Uh, I... For me, the touch is definitely different in the 20 plus because there are more spikes and they cover a larger area. They simply go further up the foot to where, you know, they, they cover a point where I would normally expect to have laces. Do I think it really matters? I mean, no. But I look, man, I see where you're going. And and, and I definitely I definitely understand that you would if you make a laces boot, you should build it around it being laceless. But what if the the laceless technology techs are like a uh, steps a little bit aside to let the, the 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 demon skin shine. It's there because it adds 
a unique sensation to wearing the boot, but it's not the, you know, it's not the central piece. Is, isn't that okay to, to say, okay, we can only take laceless technology this far. It's still there. It's still nice. You still have ACC on the Nike boots and we all know that's the greatest thing since sliced bread. So, you know, it's still there, but you've, you've kind of squeezed all the, the awesomeness you can out of it. Then it's just, you know, you still give it to people because it's nice, but then you just give them something more. Or you're, am I rambling here? No, you're, you're not wrong, Jay. I just, I don't like the idea of compromising the fit of a football boot for the sake of design or whatever technology you're trying to implement. I, I feel like fit is if, if that's not right, the whole, it, what you did with the rest of the football boot almost doesn't matter to a certain extent. And we've complained a lot about the Nike Tiempo as an example, where we think that they crammed too many layers of material, too many technologies on what should ideally be a more simple leather football boot with a little bit of tech for the sake of lockdown and responsiveness. They took that too far and that hurt the feel aspect of the boot, but objectively they still created a football boot that performs better than mm. what they had before. So even though we don't like what the final outcome was, we can't really argue that this is a good product in terms of what they tried to do. Where with, with the Pred, I love the Pred 20 Plus. I think it's one of the most ambitious football boots that we've seen in the last 10 years. It it It's the first new product from Addy since the whole kind of reforming of the brand in 2015 that really has made a splash. People were genuinely interested in the Pred 20 Plus, which we haven't seen for a number of years now. But the fact that the 20.1 is just it's easily the better football boot is a little bit annoying. I think I, I just, I, I would really like to say that the tw there's a reason to buy the 20 plus over the 20.1, but I don't think that there is. Do you think then that I'm going to get back to this in a bit. Um, do you think that if Adidas had made this with that same uh, textile that they have on the 20.1s with laces, that it would have created as big of a, hype around it because is is this just the hype vessel for the pred and you know pushing that craziness that that ambition and then you know giving people people who know and who really want that lockdown and, and the top performer giving them the 20.1 because I, I agree i mean technically they they should they didn't have to release this they could just have given us the 20.1 and if people want a higher color they could give us the prime net color and all would be good they could put this insane demon skin on and you know they could have done that and everyone probably still would have been happy, but would it have created as much hype, especially among the younger people? I, I, I don't know, man. Um, it's, a, it's a good question and I'd like to hear people chime in in the comments, but again, being really like in the middle of, of a launch like this and, and getting opinions out there and getting opinions from other people, I really feel like the overwhelming amount of comments about the Pred 20 plus, which was the first version of the boot that they showed. They didn't, there was no 20.1 when the Pred 20 launched. It was no. just the Pred 20 plus. So we can't even really compare what the reaction was side by side between well, the two. The, the point Once the 20.1 came out, people were upset about how it looked. They were upset yes. that it didn't have the same graphics. So True. from an aesthetics point of view, yes, people obviously like the way that the Pred 20 plus looks and the fact that it's laceless is a major part of that. Uh, but I think that the overwhelming amount of of comments and opinions that I saw on the internet, at least, right? I didn't go to like a public place and ask people's opinions randomly on the street, but people were intrigued by the spikes, which I think is by far the most impactful design element of that boot. And they were also intrigued slash making fun of the height of the collar, which is, yeah. <laughs> it was shocking at first. I think it's a little bit less shocking now. People have gotten used to it. Yeah, it's still if the boot had laces, would the reaction have been the same? I, I genuinely believe it would have. Y you I think? Do. Okay, I think it would have. But but to get back to the like the first question, because we're basically just rambling about how we want laces on everything. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that Adidas have evolved and that the A16 has gone on to, to has it improved as the Predator Twenty Plus? As, would you pick okay, the so, 20 plus over the A16 plus? Yes, I would. 100%. Pred 20 plus, I think, is a better overall football boot. I think 
you got to look at the ace as the replace the original replacement for the predator, and then eventually ace transitioned back into predator. So as a power slash control boot, I'm not exactly sure what you want to market it as. I think given that concept, it what they've done with the predator is a much better, more interesting, more unique football boot than what we had with the A16 plus pure control, where its claim to fame was simply the fact that it was a laceless football boot. That's really the only thing that people cared about. And I think that the hype on laceless football boots, while it's kind of expected as a norm in the industry from the Addy brand at this point, I think it's one of those things that people in general are just less excited about now. It's become, it's like collars on football boots. If the collar wasn't three miles high, on the Predator 20 Plus, no one would say anything about the collar because that's just kind of a normal thing now, right? Exactly. So there's a lot of shock value aspect to the design of the Pred 20 Plus. And I, again, it's incredible that the response was as positive as it, is, as it was and still is given the fact that it is such a outrageous looking design. But yeah, I, I think that there's definite improvement in regards to the concept of what that line represents. But I don't think that there's significant improvements in regards to the laceless aspect. I really feel like since laceless boots have come out, while some have been better than others, I don't think that there's a dramatic improvement over the last four years. Okay, interesting closing comment. Um, I would say that for me, A16+, plus, and I think that I've kind of managed to sum up my thoughts now after... Uh, 36 minutes. Um, <laughs> basically, I see this as the reason we have the 20 plus today. The 20 plus wouldn't have happened without this and this wouldn't have happened without the Prime 2.0. Okay. Um, but but for me, as you said, this was a laceless football boot. That's what the A16 plus was about. Problem was for me that it, 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 it's not the best laceless football boot we've ever seen. It was the first it really set the tone, yes. But in terms of giving us a laceless football boot, I think the experience for me is much better in the 20 plus. And the good thing about this, and the reason I think it's really come far, is not only is it for me a better laceless boot where we've seen significant evolution, it's also a better boot because it's about something else. The laces technology has done what it, it's supposed to, but it's also acknowledged that it's reached its limit. And then they've done something more to take it above and beyond. So this is, you know, okay, it's not the best in terms of lockdown, but it's not the prime driver anymore. And that for me was the problem with this. It was a laceless boot, but it wasn't a very good laceless boot. Yeah, that's, that's, it's fair. That's my fair. I mean, that was... <laughs> It was a lengthy discussion. I don't think we need to go into it too much. I'm curious to hear other people's opinions on the topic. But, I mean, yeah, my opinion hasn't really changed after this discussion. <laughs> I'll say that much. <laughs> Anyways. You know that, that, that's fair. And we don't have, we agree on so much that it can also get a little boring if we agree on everything. And uh, so I think it's, it's only fun to have these discussions. But my last question is, which would you take uh, the A16 Plus, Prime 2.0s, or Pred 20 Pluses? Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, look, I love the concept of the Pred. It's everything that I like in a football boot, minus the fit and the lockdown. It's just, it's it's such an issue. That is like, when you're talking about a football boot, that's like my number one, like, has to be perfect. Otherwise, I'm not going to have a good time in the boots. So for me, it would have to be those... 2015 Prime Knit 2.0s. I just think that's a, I think that's in the history of like a modern Adidas football boots, that's like one of the more underrated ones that they've done. It's really good. Definitely so good. So I, I went out wearing this the other day and I just realized, man, I have been, I've been missing out now wearing this Pumo. Anyway, that was just, I, I would probably, if I can't choose the low cut 20.1 Preds, I would go for the Prime Knit 2.0s as well. Anyways, long discussion. Guys, let us know what you think, and you don't have to agree with us, either of us anyway, um, in the comment section right down below. Now, Josh, on to some questions. I have some questions. And if you have a question that you'd like us to potentially answer in the next podcast, leave it down below in the comment section, please. But I have a question here from Brian PNG. He says, hey, Justin and J. Mike, as a relatively new boot collector, I would like to ask you guys, one, how do you decide when to keep the boots new in the box and when to play in them? And then two, how do you guys decide what is a good deal and what's not? With people selling retro models for ridiculous prices, how do you decide 
how much you are willing to pay for each pair. Absolutely love the podcast. Keep up the great work. Welcome to the game, man. First of all, welcome to the game. Uh, And also, uh, I'm sorry, because you're not getting out (laughs) ever again. (laughs) But but really, really good question. It's kind of like two questions in one, right? Yeah. So first question, how do you decide which boots to keep in the box, which boots to wear? Right. Um, that's very, that's actually a very good question. I, ha- I, as you can see, I wear most of my boots and, and I only have a few pairs that I'm not going to touch ever. Most of them are boots that aren't my size anyway, or also so special that I won't be able to go out and buy a replacement that I can keep new in box. So all my, uh, you know, super limited edition CR7 boots, I'm never going to touch them, uh, b- because there's no way I'm getting another one if I go out and, and, and screw them up. My hypervenoms, for instance, I mean, yeah, I can I can find another hypervenom. And and if if I buy a boot because it's rare and limited edition and there's a funny story behind it, then I buy it with the intent to keep it. If I buy it because I think it looks nice, I want to wear it. So so I already I kinda already know before I get the boots whether I should take them to the pitch or not. Yeah. Is that weird? I, I think that's, I yeah, I think you have to make that decision as you're buying the yeah. boots, depending on how hard they are to come by. I think when you're talking about modern stuff, like wear what you want. If you're not too picky about colorway, you can y- usually get a good deal on almost anything now. Um, and for limited stuff, like if there's something limited that's coming out that I really want to wear, I'll try to get two pairs if if that's the case. So I can one, wear two, a pair rock, and then just have a brand new pair. That's ideal. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I think, I think, I don't think there's too many people that are like, I need to wear this like one of 300 CR7 Mercurial that I'm going to pay $3,000 for. Like, nah, I don't know. I, I I don't think your friends are going to be that impressed to make that worth it. (laughs) (laughs) And I do have some stuff that I would have liked to wear, uh, but it's not my size anyway. So, so I can't, I would have liked to try out the the Nike GSs, for instance. I uh, never yeah. had the chance to try them. I know you say that it's it's probably for the better that I've never actually done it because my feet would be messed up and I would have ruined a perfectly beautiful pair of football boots. But you know, do you have yeah. any like do you have any boots that you deliberately bought without the intention to to wear? That was weird. Yeah, like almost almost any limited edition boot that I've right. had. Right. Uh, like almost all of the recent Predator remakes. I've had, the, I got doubles of, because it's like, you. I wanted to wear those. Gotcha. But like, when it comes to like the limited mercurial stuff and like some of the limited tempos that they've done, the remakes, I've, I've gotten doubles of, but for the most part, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm not that intrigued about wearing a limited edition colorway, to be honest. No. Um, Honestly, second I, question. Oh yeah. So second question, which we gotta, we gotta keep moving. Uh, how do you guys decide what's a good deal and what's not? And he refers to the ridiculous prices in the resale market, which really does change the game now versus I think when we built the vast majority of both of our collections, which was yeah. like going back maybe six, seven years when when the resale game, maybe in sneakers was still kind of a strong thing. It's obviously much bigger now, but I don't think there was that many people reselling football boots, trying to make a profit like there are now six years ago. So it was, it was actually possible to just hunt eBay every single day and and come across somebody that maybe didn't know exactly what they had. And you got some really good, very rare boots by today's standards for some decent prices, which is harder to come by now. And also, you know, even normal boots are just ridiculously expensive unless you find as, as you say, people who don't really know what they're dealing with. But you can go out and, and find a regular pair of Adipower David Beckham Predators and you have to pay 400 pounds. I mean, I, I'm not gonna. Uh, I only no. pay, I only go out and pay top dollar for something I really want, which I know I won't have the chance to get in the foreseeable future again. So, so and and honestly, man, I don't, I don't really spend big on stuff anymore. I just accept that, okay, it's, you know, the market has outpriced me. I'm probably never going to get my hands on a pair of uh, Mercurial SLs because they're just, (laughs) there's so few of them left and the ones that are out there are just too expensive for what I want to pay. They're not worth it to me. Yeah, I I think it's a bad, 
we've both talked, we might have even made an episode talking about this, but a football boot collection is not a good investment. No. If you're collecting football boots, you're doing it because you, you have this unnatural love for boots that you're going to stare at in your room for extended periods of time, which is kind of unhealthy, but that's what you like. So, Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. For me, uh, I have a, I have a list to get back to the question. I have a list of, of boots where I'm going to pull the trigger, but I've also put down the amount I want to pay. So if it exceeds that amount, I'm not going to do it. I'm simply not going to, I'm just going to walk away, but I'm only talking two, three, four boots that, that I'm, I'm looking at. Otherwise it's just, you know, I'm going to get a pair of, of uh, spare hypervenom ones. Okay. What do I want to pay? Like, What's my limit? That's probably $230, $40. Uh, that's it. And then, then I just, it's, it's not, cause, and it sounds stupid, but we have so much stuff now that it has to be a really good deal for me to actually want to pull the trigger. I'm not desperate anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's more difficult than ever because again, as time goes on, these, these classic boots just get older and more rare. Um, what I will say is I think that Look, I get sent links every single day to a lot of these companies reselling football boots. And 99% of the time, the prices that they have, they're way overinflated. Yeah. Way, like they're just asking too much money. And hey, if you have the boots and you want to sell them for X amount of dollars, if someone's willing to pay that, then hey, great. That doesn't mean that they're actually worth that much. So like my best advice is if you're going after something that is demanding a, a higher than average price, do your research, really know what you're buying, take up all your options, like make sure you're aware of what's out there. But even so, I don't think it's justification to like overpay for something. Cause, cause I'm, I'm with you, Jay. Like I can only think of like maybe three or four pairs that I've paid over retail for everything else in my collection. I have paid retail or less. Mm. It's the way it goes. Anyway, so, yeah, let's patience, move on to man. the patience. let's move on to the next question. Yeah, we can because we can talk about this forever. There's so many people on Instagram just reselling boots that are you know overinflating prices so hard. It's like it gets me mad. So let's not discuss it more. <laughs> <laughs> this is a question from Cathal McKennedy. Uh, thoughts on a leather predator price similar to the Nike Premier Two? Do you think it would sell in today's market or nah? Uh, yes, big time. Uh, take yeah. the Fred 20.2s slab a hybrid touch on it and you gold. I'd, I'd buy it. I, I think it would be interesting because I mean, this is an idea that I think we've talked about on the podcast before. And obviously we've seen how successful the Predator remakes have been. And those are $350. 350 euro. Ridiculous. It's, it's an astronomical amount of money. Granted, I think a lot of them have actually been worth it. Sure. But but ton of money. So if they had something, something similar leather or hybrid touch for like 120, 130, even 150, I'd be curious to see what the response would be. So I, I don't know. I don't know that it would do really, really well long-term, but no. I don't think people thought the Nike premier two or the Nike premier would be as successful as it has been. And that's a really popular football boot it's still to this become, day. Yeah. It's just become a mainstay. It's, it's like the Copa nowadays. You just see it, so, you know, all over the place. Yeah. All right. So who knows? Who knows? Adidas should definitely do it. And definitely. if they do, we want 10%. Absolutely. We'll take 10%. <laughs> <laughs> um, got a question here from Luca Natale. He says, hey guys, big fan, love the show. Appreciate it. I'm stuck right now and need a nerd opinion. Do I splurge on a pair of MIJ Mizunos, Rebula or Classic Morelia, or... Do I go throwback and get a pair of Addy Powers slash Addy Pures? Keep in mind, both of the same market price right now. And I've worn Rebulas before as well as Addy Pures and Preds in the past. So, Well, first off, if you're paying $350 or euros for a, or $320, how much a Made in Japan Rebula is, if you're paying that much for a pair of Addy Power Predators or Addy Pures, you're getting ripped off. Yeah. Uh, definitely. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay over, I wouldn't pay over $250 for either of those boots and, and definitely for Adipures less. Um, but that's just my opinion. But so, I mean, if, if you have 320 euros to spare, go for a pair of, 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 of Repulas or, or Neos. Cause to me, they are just better, lighter, more, 
comfortable and, and simply more rounded football boots. Uh, I, I prefer those to the older models, definitely, especially the Adipures because they, they're nice, but they're also really, really heavy. I don't know if you remember them, Josh, but they, this, this so, <laughs> it's, it's a brick on your foot. It's buttery soft, but it's so heavy. Adipower is- yeah. yeah, I know it's a popular trend right now. I've noticed that a lot of people, because we, we've seen certain pros doing it, even some pros who have returned to training already. Yeah. I've seen, who did I see? Was it Perisic wearing like legend ones in True. training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that like, that's so random. I thought they were the remakes at first when somebody sent it to me, but then I looked, I'm like, no, those are actually legend ones. That's oh, very weird. Weren't those the white gold Dinos? I think they were the Dino colorway, yeah. Yeah. It was like That's so they random, looked, yeah. they looked mint. I don't they, even know where he found those. Oh. They didn't even have any like yellowing or anything. I don't know if it was just a picture. Probably but it's, it's a popular trend now. Who sold it uh, for like? Yeah, yeah. very yeah. popular trend right now. Yeah. And man, if you're a pro footballer and it's not a big deal to spend 300, 500 pounds on a pair of football boots from fifteen years ago, I mean, then hey, by, by all means. Pay that much money. What, what would you do, Josh? Would you buy the modern, you know, guaranteed awesome boot, or would you, you know, take a gamble and, and get something slightly older? <sighs> Look, here's here's my always my concern with older stuff, especially if you're going to pay top dollar for it. Is I, I I think that our memories of a lot of these older boots don't live up to what they're actually going to feel like in modern day. <laughs> right. Cause like having, having actually a, a collection of a lot of these boots and like from time to time, it's like, Hey, I really like these back 10 years ago. Do I still like them now? Put yeah. them on my feet. And I'm like, Oh, you know what? Uh, maybe, maybe not, maybe not as much. So I, I think that the safer bet is the newer boot for sure. Yeah. But Hey, Wait, if you, we, if you have an all time favorite and you're willing to pay for it, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with that. Exactly. I was going to say, I just bought the hype of Venoms, Um, and, and I paid, decent money for it, but, but I really wanted it. I, I, I cherish that boot. I would say the same thing for the Addy Power. The Addy Power is one of those boots. I just went out in it today, actually recording a video for Unisport and, you know, trying out a lot of older boots. And, uh, and as you said, I realized, ah, oh, man, a lot of time has passed, but the Addy Power was actually one of those that I would definitely like to still wear today. With that said, I still think both the Neo and the Repula is is a nicer football boot. It's more rounded. It's it's quite simply higher quality. So I would go yeah. for those if you have the money, especially if you're being forced to pay, you know, 300 plus for a pair of Addy Powers or Addy Pures. Run away, my man. Walk away. Yeah, it's not, it's not that worth is it. a lot of money. And also just side note to this question, because I get asked this a lot as well. People who want to buy older boots to wear now, their concern is durability. Yeah. Because the boots have, you're talking about Addy Power, it's been sitting for up to nine years now. Mm. It's been a long time. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I can't say for sure that even 10 years is like old enough to where you're potentially going to have issues, but it's, I guess it's possible depending on how the boots were stored, that glues and whatever is basically holding all of the boot together mm. could have dried out a little bit and just, it's not as strong as it once was. So yeah, there's concerned. possibility of an old boot. You paid a ton of money for it and you wear them three times and they blow up. Mm. So something to be aware of as well. Yeah. You don't run that risk with a newer boot most of the time. True. Final and question here from Owen Schreiber. He says, hello, boot connoisseurs. So he clearly watches the podcast because that was a term <laughs> coined very early on. I like that. Appreciate that. I was wondering which between the Copa 20 plus and the Rebula 3 you prefer. Also, are the Rebulas ideal for use on artificial grass? I asked this question because you always, you always pick the questions and you give me these tough ones that I don't want to answer. And I know you don't want to answer this one. So I picked it. <laughs> All oh, right. Um, see, why, why, why do we get these questions? Uh, Josh, two girls over drinks and go. <laughs> um, uh, I really no, like no, the Copa I, 20 plus. Yeah. I know we've ranted. We ranted about laceless. Well, I ranted about laceless boots a lot on this podcast, yeah. but I genuinely <laughs> like the Copa 20 plus. Mm. With that said, what I don't like about the Copa 20 plus is the sole plate in the stud pattern, which is a good half of the football boot in this particular case where I like almost 100% of the Rebula 3. Yeah. And I think that the sole plate and stud pattern on that boot in particular, it's the one part that nobody talks about. I, I think it's one of the best layouts on the market. Agreed. Just in terms of feel, in terms of traction, it's awesome. Mm. It's a great quality boot. The comfort's good. I'm a big kangaroo leather guy, which obviously you're going to get with both of these. For me, it would have to be the Rebula, but I'd be happy to wear either of them, I'll be honest. That is that is a very good answer, to be honest. Uh, I agree with you 
if you have the money, buy the Rebula. It is the more rounded boot. It it gives you more. It's probably the it's more like versatile, if it makes sense. I think a lot of people would like that. Uh, and more people would like that compared to the Copa 20 Plus. The Copa 20 Plus offers something very, very unique. If you like that, it's it's absolutely amazing. But I should say, the lockdown, of course, is an issue compared to the regular where you get very good lockdown and and, and the outsole could be better. So it, it's like having to choose between your, your, your children, but I would also go regular if you have the money. But if you don't, the Copa 20 Plus is still, it's it's very close. Oh, that was a great analogy. Also, you you have more experience with this than me. Uh, good what? for use on artificial grass, Rebulas? Uh, they're not bad. I mean, I wear mine. I know it's kind of uh, uh, but I wear mine on. Yeah, but I have some. I wouldn't say it's a dangerous stud pattern. No, like it's not too clingy. I mean, no, definitely. you wear any boot on AG, it's the durability is going to take a little bit of a hit. But Absolutely. I mean, if you're, be- if you're betting on durability between both of these boots on artificial grass, I'm betting on the Mizunos. Yeah. Well, <laughs> bet on Mizunos every, every time when it comes to durability. Yeah. These guys are built like a rock. So, so, you know, if Ooh, you have the money, but they're also more expensive. So if you have the money, go regular, but, but the 20 pluses are very, very, you know, they're very close in the race, I would say. And as you said, I wouldn't Ooh. mind wearing any of them. Yeah. Well, that concludes episode 65. I was about to say 55, but I think it's 65. <laughs> 65 now. Of the Boot Nerds podcast. Thank you so much for watching. J. Mike, you're much better at the outro than I am. Exactly. So uh, if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed <laughs> the Boot Nerds podcast, leave us a like. Uh, we're really going to appreciate that. If you have any questions, uh, it could be whatever. You can have evil questions that we don't want to answer or just have genuine questions that you really need uh, an answer to, uh, leave them in the comment section right down below where you should totally also put pressure on Josh to shave off his damn hair. Also, of course, if you want to see what Josh is up to until he shaves his hair, you can go and check out SR4U and Car Problems by clicking uh, the bubbles over on his side of the screen. You can see what we're up to at Unisport by clicking the green bubble over here. And also, you should, of course, go subscribe to the best football boot podcast on the interwebs, potentially also the only one, by clicking in the white bubble in the middle of the screen. And with that said, I've been J. Mike and I once again approve this message. Stay safe, guys. Later.